What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Jim Leader Geo, and this is the locker room. Week 10 of season 7 of the GBA. The San Francisco Giantes are going up against John, aka Pokemon, and his team, the New Orleans Pelippers. On the left, you can see the six Pokemon I'm bringing this week. They are Tapu Fini, Salamence, Arcanine, Amoongus, Gengar, and Ditto. On and above me, you can see his 11 drafted Mon that. If you're familiar with the show, guys, you know, I kind of tier them a little bit in the likelihood that I think they'll be brought, but I'm going to kind of go through the team with you now and, uh, and explain that a little bit. So the Infernape, uh, who is his Z captain, he's also got Melodic, Skarmory, Jolteon, Uxie, Gudra, Tapu Bulu, Scolipede, Pilloswine, Porygon Z, and Sneasel. Now, a lot of these mons are pretty decent brings, actually, against my team. Uh, his team... All of the Mon match up against some of my Mon well, and others of my Mon not well. He doesn't have one Pokemon that can that really threatens my entire team. I have checks for almost everything. However, he's got a very balanced team, and so I anticipate, based on unless he decides to kind of go from the norm, if he sort of brings balance this week, this could potentially be a long game, guys. And uh, I'm just I'm pre-warning you. Because we were going to have this battle today originally, uh, but John's actually really busy. He had some family obligations and he has a presentation tomorrow and so we're going to battle after that presentation so he's not super stressed out about it. Uh, and that's fine, I'm, I'm off today, I'm off tomorrow as well. So, um, so looking at his team, let's quickly run through it. The Infernape is has been brought to almost every battle he's had. Uh, it's It runs a couple of things uniquely, but one thing that's almost always true is Fire Stab, Fighting Stab, U-Turn, and then something. That is something, that is information I can play with. Because if you look at my team, a really good switch into Infernape is a Defensive Arcanine. However, another one is Salamence. Uh, a Defensive Salamence in particular is really great against that. He doesn't Infernape doesn't learn Ice Punch. It learns every other Elemental Punch. It doesn't learn Ice Punch. And so the best way for it to hit both of those Mons is with a Rock-type move. And so there's a really good chance that his set this week is Stab, U-Turn, and Rockium Z uh, drop in that Tectonic... Is it Tectonic Rift? What is it? Continental Crush. Yeah, Continental Crush. The Tectonic one is um, ground. So he also learns Earthquake, of course, and so he could make that mistake. But here's the thing. If he doesn't bring... <laughs> There's one fourth move slot syndrome thing that he could run into, and that's that uh, Tapu Fini also resists his dual stab. And so he would need to run Gunk Shot with Poisonium in order to take on the Tapu Fini. So you see where I'm going with this? The Infernape has checks on my team, despite it being his captain and a mon that he's brought to almost every week. So there's a chance he doesn't bring it, but he's brought it so frequently that I think he will bring it hoping that he can make it work in this scenario, because it is still fast. Um, and it does have some potential to do well against my team. It's really great against Amoongus, for example. But even though it's, I have it at number one because I think it's likely he brings it, I don't think it's his best bring, and I, it wouldn't surprise me if he ended up opting to not bring it. Looking at the other two, the next two are uh, kind of a wall core for him. It's the Melodic and the Skarmory. Skarmory, Skarmory does the same thing. I mean, you can kind of try and get creative with it, but there's not a whole lot of point. It is an amazing support Pokemon. It's very bulky def on the physical defensive side. Uh, it learns Stealth Rock, Spikes, Defog, Roost... Um, taunts like you know cool support moves and you'll usually run it with brave bird as, as a move there so I, i'm anticipating a pretty standard set of it this week it um i haven't brought salamence uh, the last couple of weeks actually but i still think my opponents need to prep like i will bring it because salamence is a big threat and it is my zemon and so i think that the skarmory is coming just to make sure he has a switch into my Salamence. Salamence ordinarily can threaten even Skarmory because it, it has a pretty good special attack stat and even without investment, a Fire Blast really threatens Skarmory. So there's a chance he doesn't bring Skarmory just because it might be a, a giveaway kill to my Mets. Uh, so we'll have to see about that. 
Melodic is a big one to talk about. I'm almost positive Melodic comes. It's great against the uh, Arcanine. Um, it's got good typing, uh, bulky water, what more can you want? But it's also got two really interesting abilities and I'm gonna really need to scout for it. And here's what they are. Marvel Scale, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, when you have a status condition, your defense gets boosted and it makes it really physically bulky. So John has been running this season quite a lot of flame or marvel scale and that matches up very well against my team and actually causes problems to some of the mons that i brought so it's a very annoying set that i'm gonna have to play around in the long term because there's no way i'm just gonna crush it and take it out in one hit so i really need to set up for a kill against it the follow-up to this is that one of its other abilities is competitive. And if those of you who aren't familiar with competitive, it's basically the special attack equivalent of Defiant. I have Intimidate users on my team, quite a lot of them, and I have a good Defogger on my team. And so if he brings rocks and I want to defog them and he predicts that, he could bring in Melodic and get a plus two special attack boost on my defog. Or if he predicts a switch in from either of my physical attackers and he wants to physically wall them with, uh, with a particular spread on the Melodic, he could get the Intimidate boosting his special attack two stages. And so it could be an offensive Melodic. It's not unheard of. Melodic has seen so many different variations uh, throughout its time in the GBA League because it's drafted almost every season. This thing is like a, it's an S-class uh, bulky water as far as I'm concerned in draft league format. A lot it can do. Learns Haze, uh, Dragon Tail so it can phase stuff. Uh, it's got, of course, the Scald Beam coverage. Give it Ice Beam, give it Scald. Does, pairs up very well. It's got Recover, good bulk, decent speed, great Mon. Uh, and there's no way he doesn't bring it. Jolteon. I still think people have this mindset that my team is weak to electric because it was at the beginning of the season. I don't think it is anymore, but I still think he'll bring it because he likes Volt Turn cores and he's got uh, Infernape coming and which will almost always have U-Turn for him uh, and then Volt Switch on this. He's got two fast Mon Volt Turning between each other. The Uxie and the Gudra I have next and I have them here not because I think they're necessarily both going to come or because I think the first six Pokemon I have listed are all the six he's going to bring. Uxi is an annoyer. It sets him up for the late game. He will knock off items from things anywhere he can. Uh, it has decent coverage in the elemental punches and headbutt. It can learn a lot of different moves in that regard. It can learn stealth rock and U-turn. So it can kind of do annoying stuff and then get out of there. And so I think if he does bring it, it'll be his stealth rocker, not Skarmory. But you never know. Um, best set for that looking at my team if it wanted to be really annoying is ice punch to have it take a hit from the salamence and then potentially oko it back with if he has some offensive investment and ice punch uh could have knockoff uh probably has knockoff probably has u-turn and probably has stealth rock so there you go probably knockoff ice punch Stealth Rock, U-Turn on that. The Gudra is also a similar mon to Uxie. They're actually both really similar mons because they can both, they both have incredible coverage. Uh, the Gudra learns the Bolt Beam combination as well as Flamethrower, as well as Sludge Wave, as well as Earthquake, as well as Muddy Water. And just wow, like honestly, it can really pick and choose based on what it's afraid of on this team. So I'm predicting an Assault Vest set from this with some offensive investment running Draco Meteor or Dragon Pulse. Either one's pretty much fine. Uh, probably Flamethrower or Ice Beam along with, along with um, I'm not sure, maybe Muddy Water and then Sludge Wave. And I think it brings Sludge Wave because like, as you can kind of see with the Moana, uh, being a really good switch into it otherwise uh, it would be able to hit it super effectively with that so it could also bring thunderbolt but i don't know why it would because like i said my teeth's not really weak to uh to that anymore so uh, there's gudra for you the next row if he does not want to go too balanced or too defensive, he's not going to be bringing Melodic, Skarmory, Gudra, and Uxi. He might switch one of those out. If he does, he's going to want to bring another offensive Mon. The next tier is the most likely offensive Mons he could bring. Tapu Bulu, just because it's fun, 6th gen Mon, it can set up the grassy terrain, uh, which could be useful for... 
I don't know. Uh, he doesn't need it for its defensive benefits, but it does provide a little bit of recovery, which could be nice for the Melodic, uh, although it does power up Grass-type moves, and so Trip, who is a pretty good switch into Melodic, could take advantage of that. So he might not want it necessarily for that, but it is hard to switch in on. Uh, a Choice Band set does hit hard, not gonna lie about that, but I do have some options on my team for it, and so it's typing doesn't do well against me. Grass just doesn't do well against my team, really. It it doesn't have great coverage. It's got, you know, fighting, um, some fairy... Wait, it's got, like, Nature's Madness or something like that. But physically, it's, it's kind of threatened by the Amoongus and the Arcanine. Um, actually, even by the Salamence. A lot of things. There's a lot of reasons why I don't think it's a... a top tier bring for him however it is very powerful and so it still could be a good bring on his end the scolipede it's weird um he's used it well this season and as for what i'm bringing this week i don't have the greatest switch in for it but my team in general is not too threatened by it so he if he predicts the mon I'm going to bring really accurately, like he nails it and thinks it's these six mon, I am sort of in a little bit of trouble if he brings the Scolipede because Earthquake would take out the Gengar and Megahorn on an offensive set could do a lot to the Amoongus, Earthquake will do a lot to the Arcanine, uh, it could bring rock coverage for the, um, the Salamence, it's Poison Stab for Tapu Fini, and it's uh, frail enough that Ditto doesn't super want to take one of its attacks, um, switching in on it. So it could be annoying, and so there's a chance he brings it for those reasons, just kind of assessing that, just making it a, a potential late game win con if he kind of threatens through a lot of my team a lot. The Pillow Swine is brought depending on how scared he is of the arc of the salamence um, if he wants an offensive check to salamence that goes kind of out of whack he's gonna want the ice shard and the reason i think he would bring the pillow swine over the sneasel which is why i have sneasel in the later position is because i don't have the best ground type switch ins either my best ground type switch ins are uh, bronzong who's weak to knock off which of course sneasel gets as well and Salamence, who's weak to Ice type, which of course Sneasel does get as well. So the reason he would bring the Pillow Swine is because it frees up a potential Stealth Rocker, so it could come in lieu of Ooxie if he doesn't want to bring Ooxie. That way he still gets to have the Ice Shard and, uh, and Ice Stab against- So unfortunately we hit that moment of static again like we did in our battle against, uh, who was it, Callum? Uh, this is- frustrating because now I need to re-record the end part of this team builder but unfortunately the battle has already happened and so the relative ignorance that I had prior to the battle when recording my team builder is gone so I'm gonna do my best to uh, recreate the thoughts that I had at the moment when I record that team builder but the team builder was about 20-25 minutes long and so I don't remember off the top of my head everything that I said about everything. So I'm gonna do my best to try and keep it, um, try and keep it neutral, uh, reveal nothing about the battle, and explain only the things that I had said before as best as I can now. So we had left off. We were just right before the cancel out. We were talking about the ma the pillow swine. Uh, the pillow swine, uh, as I was saying. If he's opting to bring it in lieu of uh, playing a hyper defensive, remember, of course, we're talking about this tier here as the most likely additional offensive bring if he's going to opt to go more offensive and less balanced or less defensive. So if he's bringing uh, only three or two or one or none of the uh, defensive mon that I've listed in the top two rows, Melodic, Skarmory, Uxie, and Gudra, then one of them may switch out uh, for Pillow Swine to not lose the access to Stealth Rocks and to also um, have offensive pressure that is super effective against the Arcanine and the Salamence. 
Uh, Arcanine, of course, does have coverage for the Pillow Swine, as does uh, Salamence, and so he does need to be careful about that. But Pillow Swine with an Eviolite can be actually pretty bulky, and so I think it's a well-rounded... Ground Ice coverage is just really good. I mean, people draft... Uh, don't mind the momentum behind me uh, when I'm re-recording this. My girlfriend's in the background, so she's just lying on the bed. Um, that would be Pillow Swine's main reason for a bring, uh, as far as I see it, uh, is offensive type coverage is decent, um, can shore up well, or decently well against some of my walls, uh, but it is walled pretty well by Tapu Fini, um, so I do, I do recognize that. Uh, at the bottom we have the Sneasel, who I think is just an inferior version of the Pillow Swine. Now they're both not fully evolved Mon, but they're both still very effective in what they're trying to do. Pillow Swine's better as a support, uh, whereas the Sneasel is more offensive. It's got a good speed tier, outspeeding a lot of the, of the team. If he's worried about Gengar, then it could have Pursuit. And so, going into the battle, knowing that I have Gengar, if I see the Sneasel there, I won't be able to stay in and click attacks freely because if he just wants to sack something he's got me pursuit trapped and that could be potentially um, problematic for me because it does outspeed me so uh, it can put me in that 50 50 scenario where he can get a knock off on anything he wants or he can get a pursuit off on me and um, it is super effective stab and it could really do a number to me the porygon z is a weird mom and you'll notice something uh, when we go into the battle video tomorrow um, that I might as well just get into now. Porygon Z is a is a, a weird mon, very high special attack, uh, adaptability. Obviously, we have banned Omni boosts in League format, uh, so it doesn't have access to Z conversions. Also, not his Z captain, so that's good. But um, if if I switch over to the the tab, one thing you'll notice is on the side of the screen here, the six mon I said I'm bringing, I actually ended up switching out uh, Ditto. For Umbreon and so uh, this this was a last-minute change um, another last-minute change you'll notice um, I believe was my Moana set no it wasn't that was uh, exactly how I had it so let's go over the six mons and I'll talk a little bit more about Porygon Z and then each of the mons individually I have Mad Mence uh, Salamence with Intimidate and Flyinium Z to attack with Roost and Dragon Dance Night's Watch the Umbreon, Leftovers with Synchronize, Foul Play, Heal Bell, Wish Protect, similar to the set I brought last week. Um, we have Fresh the Arcanine, Expert Belt Offensive with Intimidate, Flare Blitz, Wild Charge, Extreme Speed, and Morning Sun. Trip with Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, Toxic, and Synthesis, running a Black Sludge Regenerator set. Uh, Genghis Gar, a Choice Specs Gengar, Sludge Wave, Shadow Ball, Thunderbolt, and Hex. And finally, we have the Moana who is uh, Surf Moonblast, Nature's Madness, Defog with lefties and a very unique uh, mixed spread. So let's kind of talk uh, about these sets a little bit more. First, I'm going to start with Night's Watch. Originally, I was, uh, I was bringing Ditto, and that was for a couple of reasons. One is, um, as I mentioned before, Melodic can run a couple of different sets. Uh, Melodic is a very likely bring for him. It's a uh, great bulky water if it runs Marvel scale with uh, Flame Orb, which I've seen him done s do several times this season. It's very physically defensive. It can be really difficult to take down uh, by fresh. It's uh, naturally very specially defensive Mon, so if he were fearing the um, the Heliolisk, uh, it could be running uh, a mixed offensive set. It could take a hit from it pretty well, actually, and could mirror coat even and potentially uh, take out a member of my team. Um, but it can also run a competitive set because I've got two Intimidators on my team. And for those of you who don't know what competitive does, I can't remember if I said it in the older video, so sorry if I'm repeating myself, but I'm going to go over it again now. It boosts your special attack by two stages when an attack gets, when a stat gets lowered. And so, uh, Moana's got Defog. He knows Moana's a good Defogger. I've got Intimidate on Fresh and Salamence. Now, neither of them have to run Intimidate, but I'm running it on both of them for pretty serious and significant reasons. Uh, a lot of his offense, uh the more threatening offensive mon on his roster are most threatening as physically offensive sets that would be the Infer infernape and the tapu bulu and being able to intimidate them and then resist their stabs 
is huge. Mad Mints, for example, that's the reason I'm running Intimidate. I'm running Intimidate Roost uh, with a significant amount of defense investment. With the speed investment I have, after one Dragon Dance, I outspeed Jolteon. Um, I can kill it at plus one with Dragon Claw. Fly with the Flyinium Z to Supersonic Sky Strike can do a lot of damage to his team. Now, I do not have a coverage move for Skarmory. I was considering running one, but uh, he's got a lot of good momentum grabbing Pokemon, a lot of uh, Pokemon that can force me to switch due to their coverage options, and so it's very possible that he'll find an opportunity to get up rocks, and I'm nervous about uh, taking consistent switch in damage on these guys because Salamence, uh, with this mixed bulk uh, and offensive spread, he can actually take hits from Infernape incredibly well. And Tapu Bulu also resists um, Tapu Bulu's Grass Stab. So, uh, originally, going back to Night's Watch, having Ditto here was important because the Infernape, of course, has so many moves. But one thing you can be relatively confident about, given John's playstyle, is that we'll have U-Turn, probably we'll have its dual stab, and then it's only got one move. Now, we're talking four move slot syndrome here, because if he wants to be able to take out Moana, who is an incredible switch in to its dual stab, he's going to need poison coverage, which means he's walled by Mad Mints. Um... <laughs> <laughs> if he... <laughs> she's trying to be sneaky and she made as much noise as humanly possible um if he's not if he's trying to bring a coverage move for mad Men's, uh it would have to be rock he doesn't learn ice punch he learns the other two elemental punches but not ice punch um then he doesn't have anything for moana and so the four move slot syndrome is kind of significant there, and having Intimidate is great because it actually means that I can survive a Stone Edge from it. Um, I can also survive a Continental Crush Stone Edge uh, if his Z move is Rockium. However, uh, not after Stealth Rocks, and he does have a lot of Stealth Rock setters and Spike setters in the Skarmory. He's got Stealth Rock on the Uxi. Uh, he's got Stealth Rock options on the Infernape, which would be great for me if he's packing Stealth Rock and not for attack moves, um, the he's got spikes, toxic spikes, or just toxic spikes on the scolipede, but that wouldn't burn Ments, of course. And then he's got rocks on the pillow swine, so a lot of hazard options. And I don't want Ments getting worn down by the stealth rocks. The other two, of course, won't affect him. So, um, so the roost is there to keep him healthy because I may need this. He's got a slippery team, uh, U-Turn and Volt Switch on several of the Mons, and very bulky switch-ins, so he can like U-Turn, get a little momentum, get into something that I can't really break. I, I don't want Ments to get chipped down and become useless, so I have Roost there. I want the Dragon Dance because I there are the, there is the possibility to set up opportunities for me to completely um, run train on him. And this is paired with, in uh, very importantly, Fresh's offensive set. Now, Fresh is running Flare Blitz, Wild Charge, Extreme Speed, and Morning Sun uh, for the exact same reason as Ments. They both can get worn down very easily by rocks, uh, and they're both, even though they're offensive Mon, and I'm going to switch them in to try and get offensive momentum back in my favor, I need them to be able to stay healthy. So I need them to be able to heal up. Um, because, again, even though these are my offensive Mon, they are very good switch-ins to uh, several of the Mon on his team. Fresh in general, packing the Wild Charge can hit the Melodic super effectively and really put that thing in a bad position. Uh, if it is running that Flame Orb def physically defensive set, uh, Wild Charge won't two hit KO. However, if he if he's taken in some chip damage, uh, then and he's not at full health, Wild Charge can 2-hit KO, I'll outspeed with the investment that I have here. Um, a max speed Melodic that is Jolly hits 146, conveniently Adamant Fresh hits uh, 147 at level 50. So I will outspeed it. Uh, the Flare Blitz and the Wild Charge both hit super effectively on the Skarmory, so I have great coverage there. It's His best switch into this is the Gudra, but Gudra doesn't really want to take a Flare Blitz 
Um, but then we can kind of, we're going to have to play into the Gudra. The Gudra is a significant mod this week. I kind of talked about it earlier when I was going over his team, but um, I need some defensive answers to it. And that was a big part of why I opted to switch out Ditto. Now, Ditto is decent as a switch in against Gudra. However, unless I'm making it, this is my Gudra switch in. It suffers from the fact that a choice scarfed Gudra versus an assault vest Gudra is going to get completely wrecked because uh, I'll switch in on one attack. If it's not dragon, I'll eat it up pretty well, but Gudra's got a good HP pool. Um, and with the assault vest, I will lose that matchup. Um, or at least it, it won't be very favorable for me. Night's Watch can switch in on a lot of what Gudra has, not Focus Blast. But uh, this mixed defensive set does very well against his team. Of course, it is threatened by the Infernape, but if he's running a Z move, he can't Oko me with close combat. I can protect to kind of scout it a little bit, uh, see what he's running, because I know he's run Choice Band in the past, so that's a possibility. Foul play will hit it surprisingly hard in the 30%. Uh, foul play is decent against the Skarmory. It can put chip damage on a lot of the other things, do a, a hefty amount to the Uxie, despite Uxie's relatively low um, attack stat. Um, it does well against the Tapu Bulu. It does well against any of them on thereafter, because they actually all have relatively decent attack stats. I'm not sure about the Porygon Z, but this an, a big reason for this, I mentioned earlier, I said I would come back to the Porygon Z, uh, Umbreon is a great switch into Porygon Z. If you look at the rest of my team, they're threatened. Moana uh, is very specially defensive, but and it can take a try attack, but it can't take it can't take uh, Thunderbolt very well. Uh, Genghis Gar can switch in on the normal type move, obviously, but it doesn't uh, handle. <laughs> but it doesn't handle a lot of the. Uh, what am I saying? Uh, it doesn't handle, handle Psychic very well. Uh, I The trip, of course, uh, can't doesn't really want to take an Ice Beam. It, there's a lot going on that my team, even though it, it does have some answers to Porygon Z, he could just bring it as a sixth Mon, and it could do a lot to my team, and be and it could end up being quite annoying in that regard. So that was a big reason for Night's Watch. It's a great switch into Sneasel also. I had built my team around the mons that I thought were likely brings, and in doing so had made myself a little weak to the lower tier brings, and then ditto, while it did discourage the setup and did provide me with some counter sweep options, um, I opted to not bring it because I don't see him bringing setup against my team this week. It makes him very revenge capable, and I don't think that's the type of matchup we're having. I think he thinks he has... Going into this, he's got to think he has good defensive switch-ins for me, and I've got to think I've got good defensive switch-ins for him. So what I, the way I built my team was under the assumption that this is going to be a balance battle, and it's going to be a lot of our walls and bulky Pokemon chipping at each other to the point that uh, things can't survive our offensive mon. So that's how that's the mindset that went into the team build. And Night's Watch is way better for that than Ditto, because Ditto is going to end up being a switch in to things. It would end up being a switch into things uh, like the Gudra, like the Uxi, and it wouldn't do much in return um, except for threaten the setup, which I, I'm not positive he's going to do. Um, it's also a good switch into the Jolteon, so I am worse about that. Uh, going into this battle, uh, uh, the notes page that I have written right here, a few of the things I, I have to remind myself is do not sack the trip until the Jolteon and the Melodic are under control. I wrote that when Ditto is a part of my team. Night's Watch is an amazing switch into Jolteon. Jolteon just doesn't have the coverage or the sheer power to break through an Umbreon. Uh, the Protect allows me to scout for choice items, which Jolteon very frequently runs. Um, and it doesn't really have any setup that I'm particularly concerned about, so it's not like it can boost up alongside Night's Watch. Night's Watch is a good switch into Jolteon. So, uh, that's the reason for that. I went over Fresh already, uh, pointing out again that the Morning Sun is there to make sure that I stay healthy and, and keep up in that regard. Uh, Trip and Moana are my two 
uh, defensive Mon Moana is weird. Um, I'm bringing Moana because I want a good defogger. I, I want to try and keep rocks off my field. The three attack situation I, I was struggling with for a lot of this team builder. The Surf is there, of course, because I'm a decent switch into the Infernape unless he packs poison coverage and Surf will uh, has a chance to Oko it. Uh, the Moon Blast is there for a couple of reasons. Nature's Madness is the better attack to click against a Gudra. Um, Moon Blast against an AV Gudra will only do about 25 to 30 uh, percent. So clicking Nature's Madness twice does the same amount as clicking Moon Blast three times or clicking Nature's Madness then Moon Blast etc etc. But the Moon Blast allows Moana to be a good switch into the Sneasel um, who otherwise well, I can surf it for 50% or Nature's Madness for it for 50%, but the Moon Blast uh, will Oko it, so so it's useful there. It's also a good attack against the uh, Melodic, because otherwise I'm going to get into this Nature's Madness versus Recover War. Um, this could, that means I, I could have put Taunt here to make me a little better against Melodic, but then again, what am I doing? I'm taunting it, and then what? Uh, I Nature's Madness it once, it'll switch out probably before it lets me do that, or I Moon Blast it, and, and, but like, then I don't have Nature's Madness for the Gudra. I wanted to have the attack options available to me, regardless of what the scenario is, and then I have Defog. Um, this was switched several times. In the original Team Builder video, it was a, um, a Kebia Berry to give me that uh, poison type resist, so that... Uh, I could better take on the Infernape if it's opting to run Gunk Shot or Poison Jab uh, with Poison EMZ for Acid Downpour to help me survive that and then uh, give me that Surf option against it. It also provides me with a switch uh, to, to take one um, uh, Sludge Wave from the Gudra really well. Um, I opted to switch to Leftovers kind of last minute. The Moana is like a very last minute um, lots of changes for me. Uh, and the reason I did that was, I think I can, if he's not running a too offensive, like if he's running a much more, maybe a physically defensive assault vest Gudra set, I can take two of the um, sludge waves anyway, that'll give me an option to defog, the nature's madness, sack Moana, or anything along those lines. So I, I went with the leftovers because it, it makes me better against a lot of the other members of his team. Moana becomes a decent switch into the Skarmory, can threaten it out with Taunt, even though I'm not bringing it. So that was sort of the reason for Moana. Trip is a pretty standard set. The Sludge Bomb's great against uh, several members of his team, the Tapu Bulu in particular. Uh, Toxic, I, uh, I had Hidden Power Fire here. Uh, and then opted to eventually switch it over to Toxic. Uh, the reason for that being that uh, Trip is better as an option against Gudra with Toxic. Uh, Gudra completely walls it. Sludge Bomb will do next to nothing to it if I don't have the Toxic. And I need as many things as possible that have something for the Gudra. Gudra's... I've used Gudra before in League form, and I can tell you for a fact, Gudra's thing is... I'll take a hit from you and and then I'm going to put back a decent amount of damage. It takes hits and it delivers back a lot of force. So that's why getting a Toxic on it is really important because it'll help whittle it um, and make it not so safe because if Moana can get a Nature's Madness off on it, put it at 50%, it's much easier for me to take it out with my offensive threats. Um, but. I, I really need it to be whittled by... I need the potential to do something to it with anything. And Trip is a pretty good switch into the Gudra, even though it can carry uh, fire or ice coverage for it. Uh, finally, last mod on my roster is Gengar. He's running Hex, Thunderbolt, Shadow Ball, and Sludge Wave. Uh, the Hex is going to help a lot against the Melodic if it opts to run a physical Marvel scale set, because if it intentionally burns itself, Hex can hit it for like 80%. Uh, so uh, pretty huge amount of damage. The Thunderbolt is good against the Melodic and the Skarmory, so that's sort of the idea for the coverage there. Um, I don't anticipate a switch into Gengar being Jolteon, so that's why I'm not too worried about clicking a Specs Thunderbolt. Uh, I just have to worry about staying in with it after that. 
Sludge Wave and Shadow Ball, just very good stab options uh, for his entire team. Shadow Ball is uh, pretty much unresisted unless he opts to bring the Sneasel, uh, which, of course, I wouldn't want to risk staying in or even clicking a move against while that thing is around anyway. So that is the team, guys. Uh, let me know about this last-minute switch to Night's Watch. Um, in the original video, I was just talking about Ditto the whole time. Uh, but this hopefully gives you a little bit more insight as to why I made that last minute change um, and ended up bringing the Night's Watch because I, I think it has the potential to be a better a better addition to this team, being able to pass the wishes off to Fresh and Mad Mets, uh, who are going to be doing a bulk of the heavy lifting offensively, Gengar uh, as a big wall breaker mid-game option, and to help shore up the defensive sets on Moana and Trip. So that was the thought process there. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.